the outlook for 2010 for unit trusts? Well, I think it's good, but there's been a huge increase in unit trusts. They're actually 904 at the moment. Wow. They've virtually doubled over the last five years. So I think it's, it could be quite tough for a lot of the newer unit trusts right. that have come online over the last few years. So when you're an investor and you need to discern and make a decision as to which fund to invest through of these 940, how do you apply criteria? How do you do that? Well, you know, you need to do a risk profile to really see that you're moving to the right unit trust. I think that's very important. And I think there is a lot of, because there's so much choice, I think it's very difficult for the consumer to make the right choice. Mm -hmm. And if you look over time, well, certainly the last five years, all the premium branded, the well-known branded unit trust houses have performed the best. Um, and that's what we do at Invest Online. We actually do a risk profile which is completely independent. And then with that, we essentially give you the advice of what is the best premier unit trust to go into. Okay, now let's talk about where to put your money because we know that equities took a bit of a knock. They're recovering right now. Some people say go into bonds. Some people go, say move into cash. Some people say move into property. Unit trust fund managers offer you a diverse portfolio, yeah. but how do you assess whether or not they'll be giving you value for money? Well, I think, you know, they're the professionals and I think you've got to allow them to do the asset allocation. Um, I think over time there's been a whole lot of different sector unit trusts you can go into. Um, I think as an individual you don't really have the expertise to be able to assess that. So I think you've got to give it to a unit trust fund manager and try and diverse, uh, diversify between a few of them and let them do the asset allocation going forward. But therein lies the caveat because many people say unit trust uh, advisors and managers don't always give you the most independent advice. Well, yeah, there is a question mark over that, and because a lot of them are tied to the major institutions, um, because they're tied to them, you've got to feel that are they really independent, and is there some kind of sway for them to rather push their own institutional unit trust as opposed to giving truly independent advice. What do you make of the view that people say it's expensive to invest uh, through a unit trust? Well it, well, it is expensive. There are quite a few different layering of fees. Um, and you know, generally now to invest is an upfront fee on average of, say, about 3% and a 1% ongoing fee. And really for the investor to recover that fee on an annual basis, mm -hmm. it's quite difficult. And that's why through Invest Online, we have no upfront fee and only a half percent. So we're given a low cost right. avenue for consumers to gain. Okay, now in terms of regulation and governance, we're seeing, for instance, the state talking about the possible need to start taxing dividend-based unit trusts mm -hmm. as a new way of sourcing money for the Treasury. Yes. But generally, um, what is the tax regime uh, around unit trusts and, uh, and how do we get uh, investors to be protected in terms of uh, statutory regulation? Well, I mean, that's under review at the moment. So, I mean, I can't really comment in terms of how that's going to pan out because I think it's actually quite complicated. Um, but you know, from a tax perspective, um, you under your normal um, capital, you get your normal under normal capital gain rules with investing in a unit trust, mm -hmm. and um, there's nothing really um, special about that. I think the the key issue at the moment is regarding the dividend-related right. funds. Yeah. Okay, unit trusts in 2010. Look, unit trusts are generally quite expensive in South Africa. Um, it's not cheap to invest in unit trusts. And as Nick said just now, so over 900 unit trusts here in South Africa, it's only about 500 listed companies, of, a bit of, of which about 100 is, is liquid, which means you can actively trade and get in and out of those. So it's, um, it's, a, it's an area where there's huge amounts of competition. And within that huge amount of competition, you've got an investor who is completely at pains of not actually understanding of what they need to do and how they need to go about it. That's why independent advice is so important.